Hello everybody, we're back. My name is John, my channel name is Blow Harder Than Tuba, and we are playing Dark Souls. So in the last video I collected some items from the area. I didn't really explain what they all do. Probably should have done that. But now we're gonna go to the next area. The first area with actual combat. So when we come over here, we get stairs up into a little sewer area. We get people throwing fire bombs at us. That will not be the only time we're hit with fire bombs. I got hit, that's pretty unfortunate. Usually I can avoid those. Oh god damn it. <laughs> so I lost Oh come on, man, really? Alright. So I know I said I was collecting items in the last video, but I'm gonna try to get that ring over there. And uh I'm gonna show you a jump. So Dark Souls does not have a dedicated jump button. You have to sprint and then let go of the sprint button and then press the sprint button again. Not hold it down, but press it. So it can get pretty complicated. And usually I die on the second jump back here. What? Where'd you come from? Okay, well now it's a miracle if I survive past this. But anyway, the ring that we got called the Ring of Sacrifice is a ring, oh sweet, I made it, is a ring that upon death it breaks, but when you're using it, upon death you won't lose any... Okay, well I, I usually die on that ledge somewhere or another. Um, that's the first, I think, real death we've had in Dark Souls in which I, I actually made a mistake. <laughs> So, I, maybe I'll have like a Dark Souls death counter. I think I should do that, that'd be pretty fun. So, we don't have any reason to go back over to the ledge now, so we should avoid dying again. I just happen to fall for virtually no reason. I seriously have no legitimate reason to justify that mistake with. So, I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me just pick up my blood stain. And the shameful thing is that I know somebody else is going to see that, and they're going to know that I fell off the edge. Not just the maybe 20 views I'll get on this video who have seen me fall off that ledge, but other Dark Souls players will see it. I know it's dumb play, but I just, I, I, I just want to kill him. So the trick with Dark Souls usually isn't to rush in like an idiot, like you wouldn't say Skyrim. Or Borderlands, it's just you have to lure them out one at a time, play patiently. And maybe that's why I dark, like Dark Souls so much, because I'm a very patient gamer. I'm not a patient person, but when I play video games, I don't like really, really fast paced games like Call of Duty. I'm bad at that type of stuff. So here's a rat. Uh, rats are kind of just jerks. They're, they're not really that bad, but occasionally they drop humanity, which is an item that's, that we need. And I may as well just go ahead and explain humanity now, because we're probably not going to use it for a while. Now, right now, I'm in a condition of uh, undeadness. Yeah, let's go with that. And when I use a humanity, the little... Um, the thing in the left, top left corner that says 0, zero right now will go from that to zero, 01. And that's how many humanities I have active. And then, when I go to a bonfire, I can choose the option that says reverse hollowing. And if I reverse hollowing, it allows for online play. It, it sets me to human. And basically, when you're human, you can do two things with online play. Well, actually, there's there's a little more, but I'm not going to get into that right now. You can either invade somebody else, or you can summon somebody, or be someone summoned. The way summons work in Dark Souls is that in an area, you can summon somebody who's similar to your level to fight off a boss with you. And once that boss is defeated, your summon is gone. And there's a bridge right here that we can jump across. I'm going to try one time, because usually I cannot make this. Nope. Okay. 
Anyway, the other side of that jump bridge is a crossbow and we really don't need that, so it's not really a concern to us. There's a dragon. He doesn't really do much. He's not that bad. We don't have to fight him or anything. Though if we shot him repeatedly in the tail, we would get the Drake Sword. Which is the biggest new weapon in the game. <laughs> Pretty much everyone recommends against it. And I'll explain why later. Once I maybe decide to get it or show you how you get it. So in this area right here, there's going to be a door, and I forgot what's in here. There's an item, wooden shield. That's better than our current shield, so we're going to equip that in a minute. And I need to ask this up real quick. And I really should have done that while I was in cover. I'll get better, guys, I swear. I'll get better. Titan Air Charm. That's what we upgrade weapons with. I'll show you that later too. And we come to our second bonfire in the game. This is nice. Anyway, uh, you, I'm not really sure if you can see it. See that ladder up there? Basically when we continue to play the game, uh, we can kick down that ladder from above and it'll open up a shortcut. So that's nice. And I forgot to tell you that at bonfires, all the enemies respawn. So it's kind of a beacon of safety, but it also makes you fight these guys again. And I'm coming back down here because there's an area I haven't showed you yet. I knew that was a bad move. I just barely made it out of that without getting hit. Okay, hold up. We're gonna equip the new shield real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, why. Because this target shield, which is our current weapon, reduces physical damage by only 78%, while this reduces 93%. And pretty soon we're gonna want a shield that reduces 100% of physical damage. Because basically the way that works is that right now, when I block a hit, it won't fully block it. I'll still take a lot of damage from it. And these guys are a pain in the ass for the early game. Especially when there's two of them and they're right here. But the strategy is, basically, keep your shield down, but avoid their attacks. And just circle around them. If you have your shield down, that means they will attack you, which leaves them vulnerable to this. Backstabs are pretty hard to get down early in the game. But the gist is, keep your shield down and aim for the back because when I kept trying to get backstabs in the early game, I never understood that you had to keep your shield down. So over here, we have completely unsuspicious looking boxes. Oh no! It's an enemy, it's an ambush, ah! Okay. Well, we got him, and that message right there probably says, beware of, yeah. I was expecting ambush. This guy is a merchant. He's really creepy, so we're just going to talk to him. Also, let's read this message real quick. Boss ahead. Ha ha ha. For some reason, they always advocate killing him, which is something that we're going to do later, and I'll tell you why, but... Well now, you seem to have your wits about you, hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> Again, really creepy dude. Right now, we're gonna want to buy two things. Um, hold up. We need a short bow and some arrows, as many as we can buy. And we'll maybe farm for some more souls so I can buy more. Uh, the reason that we're getting a short bow <laughs> and the arrows is because, not really for the range of damage, but because there's often groups of hollow, especially in the early game, that are all stuck together. And it really helps to lure them out one at a time, and you can do it by slightly walking towards them. But usually, it's a better idea to attempt it with the short bow. So what we're gonna do right now is farm, and um, I am gonna speed this up because it would be really boring to watch me do this, so. Yeah.
Okay guys, we are back, and I just farmed for about 2,000 souls, and I'll show you why in a minute. Farming usually isn't something you have to do in Dark Souls, unless you feel like maybe you're too underleveled, or you're trying to get a specific upgrade, and you just don't have enough souls, or souls required to buy Titanite shards, and stuff like that. But I just farmed because, uh, we're gonna go kill that merchant, and... Obviously, when you kill a merchant, it's your last opportunity to buy stuff from him. So we're getting all the souls that we need to buy stuff from him. And then we're going to kill him. And I think after that, that'll be the end of this video. And I'm not recommending this to, to any of you. If you want the weapon that he drops early in the game like I do, then sure. But if you are going to kill him, then I highly recommend that you farm a little first and get the items that I'm going to buy from him. So we're going to wait for this ambush again. It's not really an ambush. And let's heal up and go talk to the merchant. Still keeping your marbles all together? Then go ahead, don't be a nitwit. Never hurts to splurge when your days are numbered. <laughs> that laugh, man, that laugh. Anyway, he has a special item right here. It opens a certain door in a certain later area, and we need it right now. And now, with the rest of these, we're just gonna buy as many arrows as we can, because we don't get another arrow merchant until. Uh, a bit later. Yeah, let's just buy 150. Oh, thank you. Very much. Come back soon. <laughs> okay, so the reason that we're killing him is because he drops a weapon called the Uchi Katana. And the Uchi Katana is often considered one of the best dex weapons in the game. I might not use it all game, but I really need it right now just to replace this very, very stupid bandit dagger. If we can, we're going to try to get the Baldur's Eye Sword, because that's my entire my favorite sword in the entire game. But, right now we got to kill him. Ew! Now he's kind of a douche, <laughs> but it's always fun to kill NPCs, because they have these this dialogue. Now I don't know what he's saying. That's probably some sort of battle thing. Oh god, that's probably his daughter. Oh, now I feel bad. Oh, he dropped the orange guy in soapstone. We should have bought that too, but um, I guess since he's the only way to buy it, um, they they just had it drop because if you, that's pretty much an essential item, and that's what lets you leave messages. And anyway, we're going to go back up to the bonfire and we're going to upgrade our strength a little bit and I'll show you why. Hold on. I do feel bad for killing him because I, I don't know who Yulia is but I think that's his daughter and even, when, even though it might be bad to have a dad like him, it's still better than no dad. So let me just show you the Uchi Katana right here, and that I cannot currently wield it. Now it has a strength requirement of 14, you can see that in kind of the bottom right hand corner over there. While the current bandit knife that I'm wielding only has a strength requirement of 6. So we can wield it, but if we try, it's very ineffective. So we're going to use a couple items real quick. These are, um, I forgot to explain these, they're soul items. When you use them, they give you souls. So I don't know how many of these I need to use or if I need to farm again, but we're just trying to get enough to where we can upgrade our strength to 14 so we can use this weapon. I probably do need to farm it, and if I do, I'll just do it off camera uh, and end the video. But if I don't, 
Hold on. Soul of the Lost Limb give, give 200 each. Large souls give 400. Just double. So I think this is enough for one more uh, strength upgrade. Uh, yes it is. So it looks like we're ending the video right now, and when I come back I will be wielding the Uchi Gatana and I'll show you how nice it is and why people use it all the time. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I will see you guys later. I love you. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And I will see you next time, in which we will conquer the rest of the Undead Burke. So I'll see you later.